For centuries, the Pacific Northwest has looked like one of the most peaceful coastlines on Earth. Towering evergreens, misty beaches, and quiet coastal towns stretch from Northern California through Oregon and Washington all the way to Vancouver Island. But beneath this calm surface lies one of the most dangerous tectonic features on the planet, the Cascadia Subduction Zone. This fault is not small. It stretches for more than 600 miles where the Juan de Fuca Plate dives beneath North America. And while it may seem quiet, geologists now know that Cascadia is capable of unleashing earthquakes so large they could rival the deadliest in history. Here's the shocking truth. Scientists have mapped a segment of Cascadia off the Washington coast that may be the most dangerous of all. Unlike the noisy San Andreas in California, Cascadia barely makes a sound. It locks, building strain silently for centuries until the day it finally rips free. The last time that happened was in the year 1700. Without warning, the entire fault ruptured in a magnitude 9 megaquake. Native oral histories describe the land shaking violently, villages swallowed by waves and forests sinking into the sea. The earthquake was so powerful it launched a tsunami that traveled across the Pacific, striking Japan hours later. Now more than 300 years have passed. Geologists say the cycle is repeating. The Washington segment in particular has been found to accumulate stress at alarming rates. If it ruptures, it could unleash devastation across Seattle, Tacoma, and the Puget Sound, shaking not only the coast, but cities deep inland. The question is no longer if Cascadia will rupture again, but when. And the Washington segment may hold the key to the next disaster. In the past decade, researchers have been mapping the ocean floor with new precision. What they've found offshore Washington has raised red flags. The fault line here doesn't just dip smoothly beneath the continent. Instead, it's jagged, fractured, and in places, steeply locked. That locked section is a geological time bomb. As the Juan de Fuca plate is forced downward, the North American plate is squeezed and compressed. Like a spring wound tighter and tighter, the strain builds invisibly. And because Cascadia produces so few small quakes, it doesn't release pressure gradually the way other faults do. It saves it all for the big one. Computer models show that when this segment ruptures, the shaking could last for five minutes or more, an eternity compared to the seconds-long jolts of smaller quakes. Buildings not designed for such relentless motion could crumble, bridges could fail, liquefaction could turn whole neighborhoods into quicksand, and the shaking is only the beginning. The seafloor will lurch upward, displacing massive volumes of water. Within minutes, a tsunami wall could be racing toward the Washington and Oregon coasts. In some places, residents might only have 15 minutes to reach higher ground. The waves could tower 30 feet high or more, slamming into coastal towns with unstoppable force. Farther inland, Seattle and Portland may not face the direct tsunami, but their harbors, infrastructure, and millions of residents will still be hammered by the quake itself. Emergency planners warned that highways, airports, and utilities could all be crippled simultaneously. Recovery could take not weeks, but months or even years. And it's not just the Pacific Northwest at risk. That same tsunami could sweep across the Pacific just as it did in 1700. Japan, Hawaii, and other nations could all feel Cascadia's fury. The data points to one conclusion. Washington's locked fault segment is a sleeping giant, storing energy that will one day be released in a catastrophe of staggering scale. The terrifying part is how unpredictable this time bomb really is. Scientists can't tell us the exact day or year Cascadia will rupture, but they can tell us the odds. Geological evidence suggests these quakes happen every 250 to 500 years. With 323 years already passed since the last one, we are living in the window of possibility. Recent studies using GPS data show the land along the Washington coast is slowly being dragged downward by the locked plate. 
When the quake hits, that land will rebound upward violently. This is exactly the kind of silent warning geologists look for, and it means the strain is still building. So what happens when it finally snaps? Emergency officials estimate that tens of thousands of people could die if Cascadia struck today, with hundreds of thousands displaced. Coastal towns could be obliterated. Major cities could suffer infrastructure collapse. The economic cost would be in the trillions. But it's not hopeless. Japan's 2011 Tohoku earthquake was a similar subduction event. It killed thousands, but it also taught the world critical lessons. Faster tsunami warnings, stronger building codes, and community drills save lives. The Pacific Northwest is racing against time to adopt these strategies. In Washington, evacuation towers are being built on the coast. Schools are practicing earthquake drills. Scientists are deploying more seismometers and ocean sensors to detect the earliest tremors. Yet despite all this, Cascadia remains one of the least understood megafaults in the world. Unlike California's San Andreas, it hasn't produced frequent quakes to study. It is silent, deceptive, and hidden beneath the sea, which means when it finally awakens, the surprise could be even more devastating. The Washington segment may be the deadliest piece of the puzzle. It's a segment that could turn a serene coastline into a disaster zone in a matter of minutes, a reminder that Earth itself is not fixed, but restless. And while scientists can't stop the Cascadia quake, knowledge is power. By understanding the danger now, we can prepare, adapt, and when the day comes, survive. So the next time you stand on Washington's beautiful coast, remember, beneath your feet lies an earthquake time bomb. The only question is when it will explode.